trying to uh, focus some of my early morning thoughts on uh, the summertime, you know, because it's summertime, you know, summertime. And uh, here's just a couple things for you to consider. Uh, what do you need when you visit Death Valley in the summertime? Your dental records. What? What? Did you get that? You get that. Because it's so hot, you're going to die, so you need your dental records so they can identify you. What did the air conditioner say to the man? I'm your biggest fan. Yeah, your biggest fan. What are the only two seasons in Phoenix? And this is true. Hot and hotter. Yeah. So, those went over well. Yeah. <laughs> I had some more, but I'll save them for the AM service time. All right, we're in lesson, what lesson are we in? Three on how to witness to a Mormon. And uh, by the time we're done today, I'll be. Uh, an eighth of the way through this study, probably. But we are, we're, we, we were, last time we met, we were looking at differences in terminology. There's things that, when we say them in our uh, belief system, they mean a certain thing. But when a Mormon says them, they mean a different thing. So one of those things, continuing on, in, in the last outline, you would have had the first 16 of these uh, items. And if you need a copy of that, there's a, there, there always should be available for you. If you're not, just let me know and we'll print some up for you. But item number 17 is, is hell. And for a Mormon, hell is, uh, is, is, a, is an institution more than it is a place. And in hell, uh, under the LDS belief system, people go to hell and then they get out of hell. It's kind of like a jail type situation. They don't spend their eternity there. They stay until their debt has been paid. Very, very akin to the Catholic system. The Catholic system of purgatory. Okay? Yes? And who decides when it's paid? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My brother told me that uh, missionaries will go around to each cell and will talk to them, and that they, once they believe the way that the LDS does, then they're released. Uh, okay. So it's like it's like a, it's hard. It's it's really hard for people in Mormonism to figure out sometimes what their stance is, since everything is works-related. And it's hard to tell when everything is, is works-related, when you've done enough work. You know, what is enough work? So that's, that's part of the, the problem. Uh, but remember, uh, I think Joseph Smith fashioned his religious beliefs after other religions. And I, I think this is real close to the belief of purgatory. Now, Godhead, in your outline, Godhead, uh, the elders belief, LDS believe that the Father God is a resurrected man who has a physical body. That Christ is a separate resurrected man with a physical body. And that the Holy Ghost is a separate man with a spiritual body. They are three totally separate gods. Right. Three, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We're going to look at uh, some other differences here in a minute, and we'll talk about that again. And, that, and I will mention that the, the, uh, the LDS is very specific in regards to the Holy Ghost versus the Holy Spirit. All right? The Holy Ghost is part of their Godhead. The Holy Spirit is a spirit that God uses, that God's use to influence you, okay, in the, the LDS belief system. 
The Bible teaches us that God, of course, is not a man, that there's only one God, uh, uh, a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. The next item is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, in the LDS belief, is separate from God and the Son, and he's different from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is a person, uh, a spirit person, and he while the Holy Spirit, this is what I said earlier, is influenced from the Father and not a personal uh, being. Uh, it doesn't have a personal relationship with you. The problem is, see, so the, to facilitate their belief system, the, the, the uh, Mormons will use these two different words for what in the Greek is the same word. The word that's used for Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit as it's translated in the Word of God in the Greek is the same word. It's where we get the word pneumatic from. It means something that causes things to happen that you cannot see. It's pneuma, and it means uh, like a pneumatic, uh, you, uh, like a power hammer or something that's driven by air. And you can't see the air, but the air, air has a result. That's, that's, the, that's the word behind, that's translated in the word to Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. But the Mormons uh, have kind of obliterated that, uh, that word so that it will fall in line better with their beliefs. And then the, 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 the Mormons, can, can you bring up uh, Matthew 1.18? Yeah. The Mormons believe in regards to the virgin birth that uh, God as a resurrected physical man is... Uh, is uh, See, the Mormons believe that God was once a man. Okay? Jesus was once a man. And in that, in that way, the Mormons believe that the conception of Jesus Christ was in the same way that you and I were conceived. They believe that Matthew 1.18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, together they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. The Mormons believe that that scripture is an error, that it's mistranslated. Okay? That that scripture is mistranslated. Alright? Does that make sense? Any questions in any of those? Okay, if you want to look at it just quickly on your last page of your outline, I told you I was going to put this on your outline. And this is just a, a, a diagram of the Mormon belief of heaven. It's on the final page of the outlines, if you have your outlines. If not, you can pick one up. But it shows where everybody starts. Remember, we're all spirit children in heaven together. All right? Indiana doesn't have this, so... Uh, and so we're all in heaven in the first estate, and then we come to the second estate, which is what? Earth. We are born. Okay, we're all spirits in heaven. We are born and when we come to the second estate. And then you see the three different uh, heavenly kingdoms, the, uh, the straight and narrow way, the broad way, and then the, the, the low way. And uh, those are kind of specific in their wording. That's, that's the way it will be worded in their, uh, in their document. And we'll be looking at all of these uh, different things on each one of the way as we, uh, as we continue this study. All right? But that's just for background information. You can uh, hang on to that. So now I want to begin a, a comparison contrast between what Mormon doctrine says, what Mormon scripture says, and what the Bible says, because uh, we're going to look at things from three different perspectives. And uh, we're going to look at different topics. And we're going to begin by looking at these topics by what the Mormon doctrine says. And Mormon doctrine is merely the accepted teachings of the church. And uh, 
we'll present those out. We'll, we'll look at those. I'll uh, we'll mainly buy quotes from Joseph Smith, and then I'll, I'll back up those. We'll back up those quotes with other Mormon doctrine. Then we will look and see what Mormon scripture says, because Mormon doctrine and Mormon scripture oftentimes do not reflect the same beliefs. A lot of times, Mormon doctrine and Mormon scripture oftentimes do not reflect the same beliefs. The, the, the present-day Mormon doctrine is very different from the Mormon doctrine that Joseph, uh, from the Mormon's, Mormon scriptures, than what they use today for doctrine. Yeah. And I'll talk about those, the different sources of doctrine as we go through them. And then we'll have a third section in each one of these areas where we'll see what the Bible has to say. All right? And... Uh, we will see clear differences between what Joseph Smith, who said he was uh, visited by God and Jesus, remember? The two people that he met in the forest were God and Jesus, separate entities, okay? Uh, and what did they tell Joseph Smith, Smith in the forest? They told him that all the churches were wrong and that he had to start a new church. That's, that's how this thing began. And that all the Bible-based churches of that day were wrong because they had perverted the Word of God. And uh, so Joseph Smith then was shown the golden plates by Moroni, okay? And his brother, and his other brother. And that those, uh, those words now are contained, the things on the plates are contained in the Book of Mormon. That's the origin of the Book of Mormon, all right? Now, there's other things that become, are, are just as important in the uh, Mormon belief system, but that's the foundational document, the Book of Mormon. And so the, the Mormon's existence is based on Joseph Smith's story of being visited by heavenly beings and then the subsequent writing of the Book of Mormon. So as you are able to show a Mormon the difference between the Book of Mormon, Mormon doctrines, and what the Bible says, then there's an opportunity to at least plant in their minds uh, the seed that there might be something amiss here. So, uh, because Mormon doctrine does not, does not coincide in many areas with what was originally put into the Book of Mormon as Mormon scripture, all right? And of course, neither one of them oftentimes agree with what is in the Word of God. It's uh, Hebrews 4.12 is a, is, a, is, a, is a good place to think of this because there it says that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, and it pierces even to the uh, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And uh, when I quote, I'll be quoting from King James, and I'll, I'll tell you that uh, why later. But the best thing, best thing we can do, you know, if you, if you have an opportunity to witness to the Mormon, to a Mormon, if you're able to show some of these comparison and contrast to them, and you don't have to delude them with them, just if the Lord leads to a position where you can make one or two statements at a time, and then let the Lord work it, work on them for a little bit. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to beat them up. They're not our enemies. These are just people that we need to be concerned about their salvation. So the first thing we want to look at is uh, Mormon doctrine says this is Mormon doctrine. It says that there is more than one God. I'll be quoting from uh, the Mormon Doctrine, written by Bruce R. Mc McConkie. All right, it says that there are three separate personages, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who comprise the Godhead. As, if, as each of these persons is a God, is it, it is evident from, the standpoint, from this standpoint alone that a plurality of gods exists, exists. There is a plurality of gods, all right? To us, 
speaking in the proper finite sense, these three are the only gods we worship. But in addition, there is an infinite number of holy personages drawn from worlds without number who have passed on to exaltation and thus they are gods. That's what Mormon doctrine says. This is what uh, Joseph Fielding Smith wrote in the teachings of the prophet uh, Joseph Smith. Uh, he wrote, I have always, this is, so what Joseph Fielding Smith is saying, or these are the words of Joseph Smith. I have always declared God to be a distinct personage. Jesus Christ, a separate and distinct personage from God the Father, and the Holy Ghost was a distinct personage and a spirit. And these three constitute three distinct personages and three gods. Okay? Now, you'll say... That, that book, The Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, was written in 1938. You know, Mormonism isn't that old. Joseph Smith uh, lived a very short life. He was killed uh, while in jail. A mob, a mob killed him. He uh, lived in, he was born in 1805 and lived to be 39, 1844. God wants us to seek him out and seek the truth. So there's, you know, uh, God has never placed a lot of restrictions on the meanderings of man's mind. He lets man pretty much go where he wants. So at, uh, at 24 years old, that's when, that's when the Book of Mormon was written by Joseph Smith. And then, uh, wasn't that much longer that he lived, really. He lived to be 39. But in 1938, Joseph Fielding Smith compiled all of the sermons and writings of Joseph Smith into the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. And this is a doctrinal book in the Mormon belief. Okay? It's just as important. All if, if the Book of Mormon is one, the teachings of Joseph Smith is 1A. All right? It's right there. But this is what Mormon Scripture says. It says in Mormon Scripture that there is only one God. And who wrote the Scripture? Joseph Smith wrote the Scripture. According to what the, pla the plates told him. He said, in, uh, this is written in Doctrine and Covenants, okay? which is considered a scriptural source. And he gave them commandment that they should love and serve him, the only living and true God, and that he should be the only being whom they should worship, which Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one God, infinite and eternal, without end. Amen. Uh, from the book of uh, Nephi, I think it's pronounced, Nephi, it says, And now behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way, and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. Some of this may sound very familiar. And now behold, this is the doctrine of Christ and the only and true doctrine of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God without end. From the Book of Mormon, uh, uh, that's in uh, 2 Nephi 31.21, from 3rd Nephi uh, 11.36, And thus the Father bear record of me, and the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father, and me and for the Father, and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And then, from the Book of Mormon, in the front of the Book of Mormon, there is the testimony of the three witnesses. Are you familiar with the testimony of the three witnesses? The three witnesses are three guys that went out into a field with Joseph Smith and they asked God to speak to them about the authenticity of the golden plates. And they, as the three witnesses, then 
wrote a statement which is contained in the Book of Mormon where they say, we, we heard God tell us these things. And in that statement, uh, it says, And the honor be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, which is one God, amen. And then there, it, it has their names, Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, and Martin Harris. And David Whitmer ended up starting another church. But all three of these men on their deathbed affirm the fact that God had spoken to them about the authenticity of uh, Mormonism. And there's also another statement in the Book of Mormon after the, the statement of the three witnesses, the statement of the eight witnesses, which is kind of the same deal, uh, alluding to the authenticity of these God visitations. And uh, what you end up with is a group of 12 uh, with Joseph Smith. You, you have these witnesses and Joseph Smith. Now, we know, what, we know what the Bible says in regards to how many gods there is, okay? Deuteronomy 4.35, uh, Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Isaiah 44, 6 and 8 speaks about uh, one God. Jesus speaks about him and the Father being one in John 10.30. Uh, in Exodus 34, 14, God says, You shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God, uh, whose name is Jehovah. And then uh, 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father and the Word and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. John, John uh, almost always referred to Jesus as the Word. Okay? So there's a great disparity. Pardon me? Is that John 10.30? Uh, 10.30, I and my Father are one. Jesus speaking. 1 John 5, 7 is uh, the three bear witness in heaven. Father, Word, and Holy Ghost, and the three are one. So you have Mormon doctrine that definitely, if, to me, it says that there's more than one God. Then you have Mormon scripture which is very akin to the Bible in many ways, which says there's one God. So you have a, a, a church where you have two different disciplines of the church, okay? See, the Word of God would tell us that doctrine, true doctrine, is an imperative to understand the truth. Did you know that? That's why it speaks about, where Paul speaks about people being blown back and forth by the wind. It's because they are, they, are not, they are not foundationally strong in doctrine. And since they don't, they don't, they don't know doctrine, they are prone to, be, to find themselves in a belief system that doesn't work. And what you have with Mormonism is that you have a religion that refutes itself. And it does that a lot. If you want to look at the next topic area, it's that God, Mormon doctrine says that God was once a man. And in the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, by Joseph Fielding Smith, it says, God himself was once as we are now and is an exalted man. He continues, I am going to tell you how God came to be God. This is what Joseph Fielding Smith said, Joseph Smith said. He says, I'm going to tell you how God became God. We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. That's what we believe, right? God has always been God from eternity past, all right? We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see it. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another and that he was once a man like us. Yea, that God himself, the Father of us all, 
dwelt on an earth, the same as Jesus Christ himself did, and I will show it from the Bible. That's what Joseph Smith said. And then, uh, there's another quote, as man is God, as man is God once was, as God is man may be. And that's from a, a doctrinal book called The Life of Lorenzo Snow. And Lorenzo Snow uh, wasn't a, he was the fifth president of Mormonism. He wasn't a president, I think he was like for three years, right at the turn of the century, 1899, I think, uh, 1901. But he was a very prolific writer. So that's what Mormon doctrine says. But what does Mormon scripture say? Well, in the Book of Mormon, in the book, in the chapter, in the, the section entitled Mormon, in the, ninth, uh, in the ninth chapter, the ninth through eleventh verses, it says, For we do not read that God is the same yesterday, and, to, and yesterday, today, and forever. In him there is no variableness, ne neither shadow of changing. That means that he, he doesn't even have a shadow of change in who he is. And now, if ye have imagined up unto yourselves a God who doth vary, in whom there is a shadow of changing, then ye have imagined up into yourselves a God who is not a God of miracles. So he says, if you think that God changes, then you're not talking about the right God. But behold, I will show you unto you a God of miracles, even the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and it is the same God who created the heavens and the earth and all things that are in them. All right? That's from the Book of Mormon, which refutes Mormon doctrine. And then uh, there's like a, in the book of uh, Moroni, uh, For behold, God knowing all things, being from everlasting to everlasting, behold, he sent angels to minister unto the children of men to make manifest concerning the coming of Christ, and in Christ should come every good thing. Talking about the everlasting nature of God. And we know what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? God was never a man. All right? So you have the foundational document of Mormonism, which is their scripture, which in many ways reflects, even you'll hear, hear the same word phrases that are used in the Bible in certain areas. And then you have Mormon doctrine, which comes on along later and changes all of that. All right? And uh, there's a lot of conjecture of why that happens. I have, I have some my own conjecture, but... Uh, it's a, there's a vast difference in what has been written in their scripture and what is now taught as doctrine between those two and then of course their doctrine is very uh, different on, on a lot of places than what the Bible says Psalms 50 21 speaks about uh, God being God okay Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. All right. Romans 1, 21, uh, 1, 22 and 23. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of him, the incorruptible God and they made their little images of him because they thought they were God. And that's what the Mormons teach now, you know, that you can become God and you will have your own kingdom. And that's quite an alert for people. Strangely enough, they, people that believe it, they, 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 are, they are fascinated with that idea. And some of, the, and, and, you know, some of these people are very intellectual uh, people that live in our own communities. So. And then the last one I wanted to talk about today is that Mormon doctrine says that God is progressive. And I'll show you what I mean. In the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, it says, what did, what did Jesus do? Why, I do the things I saw my father do when worlds came rolling into existence. My father worked out his kingdom with fear and trembling, and I must do the same. That is, Christ must do the same. And when I get my kingdom, I shall present it to my father, so that he may obtain kingdom upon kingdom. So when you get your kingdom... You can give it to God. So God, God gets another kingdom. Okay? 
and I shall present it to my Father, so that he may obtain kingdom upon kingdom, and it will exalt him in glory. He, God the Father, will then take a higher exaltation. How can you, how can you give God a higher exaltation? How can your works give God a higher exaltation? And I, meaning Christ, will take his place. So in other words, what this says, his teaching, is that when you, uh, when, you, when you do your work, your work exalts God to a higher level, and you take his level. And then you, somebody else exalts him higher, and you, that person takes his level. So it, what it says is that God is ever an ever-progressing God. And then it again, again, continues, so that Jesus trends, treads in the tracks of his Father, Jesus fall, uh, follows in the tracks of his Father, and inherits what God did before, and thus God is glorified and exalted in the salvation and exaltation of his children. All right? Another teaching in the book of Joseph Smith, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and God discovered that, and John discovered that God, the Father of Jesus Christ, had a father. You may suppose that he had a father also. So he's saying that God had a father. Jesus Christ had a father, and thus God had a father. That's what, that's what the teachings of Joseph Smith teach. Okay? And then Mormon scripture says that God is unchanging, because it reflects more of a biblical belief. For I know that God is not a partial God, neither an unchangeable being, but he is unchangeable from all eternity, eternity to all eternity. Moroni 8.18. And then in uh, Doctrine and Covenants, by, by these things we know that there, there's a God in heaven who is infinite and eternal from everlasting to everlasting, the same unchangeable God. So on one hand, God is progressing. On the other hand, he is unchangeable. For behold, I am God, and unto a God of miracles, and I will show unto the world that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's from 2 Malachi 27, 23. And we know what the Bible says. The Bible says that God is unchanging. Uh, Malachi 3, 6, Hebrews 1, 12, James 1, 17. I'll address that, era, that idea. Isaiah and Isaiah 43 it speaks to that. So I think... Uh, as I've gone through this study, and this study is from uh, Concerned Citizens in uh, Mesa, who do some of the best work in the country and how to, how to witness to Mormons. The thing you see as you go through it is that this is, uh, this is a religion, I guess, yeah, you can call it a religion, a belief system that was founded by a man on manly ideas and now is manipulated by men with men, men still with manly ideas and uh, I really do I think we need to I think we need to get on our knees and weep over our friends that are Mormons the people we know because uh, what they believe and I, I believe part of their problem is their ignorance because they don't know what they believe what they believe has nothing to do with God. It really doesn't. It's, a, it's as much of a cult as the witnesses. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's as much as a cult, uh, it's as, it, you could, it has a lot of Islamic teaching in it. Uh, it borrows ideas from Buddhism and Hinduism. None of those things have anything to do with Jesus Christ. I just pray that we'll have opportunities. And you don't have to get you know, in a battle with anybody. You know. just, and, and, and part of your part of your witness can be your witness, your personal witness. But and you know what the most important thing you can show uh, Mormons is is the joy of Christ. The joy of Christ. Because there is a difference. Alright? Any comments? Anybody? It's just so hard for me. It's 
speak a word and every, it's supposed to change everybody's life immediately. But it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you just plant seed and you let it go. And, you know, the Lord will take, will take hold however the Lord wants to take hold. Anybody else?